Welcome to Torah Today Ministries. My name is Grant Luton. And I'm Robin Luton. And we are discussing Torah portion Shoftim, which begins in Deuteronomy 16, verse 18, and goes through chapter 21, verse 9. And what does the word Shoftim mean? It means judges. Mm. And this Torah portion uh, aligns itself with the Torah portion beginning in Exodus chapter 21, which is called Mishpatim. Uh, a Shepat is a judge and a Mishpat is a judgment. And Mishpatim contains all those commandments have to do with human relationships yeah. and proper commandments for a society to operate. So this, a lot of this in Deuteronomy is repetition, but there are new elements introduced as well. Well, something that continuous, continually um, occurred to me as I was reading through this portion several times, just yesterday and today, something we mentioned way back at the beginning, Grant, when we started going through these portions together, there are things that we read in the Torah that don't appear to make sense. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's really important that we don't disregard them as being nonsensical because right. we have to remember that we just don't completely understand it yet. That's right. And so you and I are sitting here having these conversations every week, not because we completely understand everything and we're correct about it all, we're processing this. Absolutely. And we're kind of processing it with an audience, so, yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, you know, as we go through this, I know people read this, they think, judges and officers shall you appoint in all your gates. And right. Some translations so say cities. So what does that have to do with me? Yeah. And they're talking about when you go into the land and you kill these Canaanites and you have cities and, mm -hmm. and it's like, what does this have to do with me living in Akron, Ohio in 2023? And it has everything in the world to do with you and with us. Because Paul says all scripture is God breathed. Mm -hmm. And so therefore all scripture is profitable for your teaching and for your for your uh, correction, for your, there's a word that I'm missing. Instruction. Um, it's good there for your instruction and then for pointing out your errors, right. for correction and instruction and, mm -hmm. and godliness and in preparation for doing God's work. So, um, and I really, really muffed that quote, didn't I? I always can quote that verse and today. I should have had a third cup of coffee, I guess. <laughs> but so this applies to us. And so it's like, what are the gates? What are my gates? Well, let's, can we back up and what is the difference between judges and officers? Well, the judges are the ones who make the decisions. Okay. The officers, the shotrim, which is the, the modern Hebrew word mm -hmm. for policeman. Mm -hmm. They're the ones who enforce. Right. So in my soul, I need to have the ability to see what is wrong. That's the judges. And then I have to exercise my will to correct it. Which is the officers. The officers. Okay. And I have to do this. I have to point them in all my gates. So we learn what is right and, and we recognize we... it, but then we have to apply it. Yeah. In order to create any kind of significant change. And we need to exercise self-control, which mm -hmm. is a fruit of the Spirit, mm -hmm. self-discipline, so that when we have tendencies and weaknesses, we've set up officers in our lives to protect us from falling into those things. Mm -hmm. So we need judges and officers for the gates of our eyes. And what are the those gates? The gates of our ears. Right. The gates of our speech. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have different gates into the city of my life, the city of your life. And think of a gate. A gate is the place where there is entrance and there is exit. Yeah. So what goes into my eyes, what comes, what I see, yeah. um, what goes into my ears, and then the mouth. That is the gate well, where you know, things go in and things come that's out. That's right. Well, you know, I remember when we were in Israel last time, 2018, mm -hmm. and uh, we visited the ruins of Megiddo. It was the so city. so amazing. And the and the, the the commentator, the guide, was pointing out, and it really hit me this time around, that there were two sets of gates. There were the gates where anybody could come in, mm -hmm. foreigners, traders, merchants, and it came into a courtyard. Yeah. But if you wanted to go into the rest of the city, there was a second gate you had to go mm -hmm. through. And at that gate is where the judges and the elders of the city sat. Mm -hmm. Now you could come through the first gates to trade your wares, you know, to drop something off, to uh, purchase things and 
anybody could come in there. But if you wanted to enter into the city proper, you had to go through the second gates and you had to be interrogated by the elders. They'd say, where are you from? Who do you know here? What God do you worship? And they would really ask you some personal questions. They did profiling. <laughs> and only when they were happy, then they would let you go on into the city. You were safe. Yes. Mm -hmm. We need to do the same things with our own eyes, our own right. ears, our own mouths, mm -hmm. and let the things in that belong and keep out the foreign elements that can bring damage to our souls. That's really important. We need important. to guard our souls. Well, if we go a little further down in the opening verses, I noticed in verse 20, it says, justice, justice, mm -hmm. you shall follow. It doesn't just say no. it once. <laughs> yeah. It says it twice. Zedek, Zedek, yes. This is what you will pursue. Why? So that you may live and possess the land which the Lord God is giving you. In other words, mm -hmm. things have to be just and right. There yes. has to be rightness Yes. in order for us to live in that place that right. God really intends for us to dwell. Yeah, and that word zedek can be translated as justice mm -hmm. or righteousness. It's the same word. And a person who is righteous is called a zadik, a righteous man. And the Messiah is referred to as ha zadik, the righteous one. In fact, this term for the Messiah is used by John over in 1 John 2, 1. And he says, my little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Yeshua HaMashiach HaTzadik, the righteous one. Right. And um, so we are to model our lives after God. And the example we have of that is Messiah. He was the righteous one. And he wants us to be righteous. So zedek, zedek, shall you pursue? You know, that word for pursue is a word for persecute. So if you have someone coming after you, trying to kill you, <laughs> that's mm -hmm. the same, same word, mm -hmm. radaf. And they say, but here, what I want you to do is pursue righteousness, righteousness, pursue it, chase it down, grab hold of it. Make this the thing you focus all of your energies on, becoming a righteous person, a just person. And I, I always <clears throat> want to think in terms of balance um, because as we're reminded in Proverbs 11, 1, a false balance is oh, an abomination yeah. to the Lord, <clears throat> but a just weight is his delight. And I believe that all of us have in our souls hardwired um, a craving for justice. We, do. we need to see justice in order to be at peace. And when you live in a culture where justice has been distorted and misrepresented, it's because there's no truth. That's right. Justice and truth have to be married. That's right. They, you cannot have justice without truth. And then in the word, I've also noticed that truth and love have to be coupled. They do. And Absolutely. how far have we come yeah. from maintaining that beautiful, godly um, yeah. balance? And, and so when you think of justice, think of truth. When you think of truth, think of balancing it with love. And, um, you know, I was also thinking of Psalm 89, 14, where we're reminded that righteousness and justice are the foundation or the habitation of his throne. Mm, that's right. That's who he is. Yeah. And he wants us to pursue that and yeah. dwell in that. Exactly right. So well put. And we've drifted we've drifted far as a world, as a nation, as a community, and we've drifted as individuals because we've we absorb what we feel and see around us and then we kind of without even realizing we kind of imitate it don't mm. we because down in 16 21 and 22 after he establishes the fact that justice justice pursue yeah. he goes on and and it's shared that don't plant for yourself an asherah of any kind of tree right. that 
you know, you shall make for yourself. Don't, don't set up for yourself these pillars that you've noticed all the people around you setting yes. up because we fall into imitation. Mm -hmm. We fall into trying to copy what we see because we're not setting our eyes on his righteous standard. <clears throat> that is so true. I read something fascinating because, you know, we are imitators. Little children imitate. Um, and there's an, an, an old saying, one can imitate everything in the world except truth. For truth that is imitated is no is longer truth. true. No. And so it's as counterfeit. soon as something is false, as soon as there's falsehood, yeah. everything slips. That's why we're to wear the belt of truth. Because That's right. everything else hangs on truth. But one caution with that is, you know, I just did some research. I shared it in my first Galatians teaching. There are now 45,000 different Christian denominations. And each one thinks thinking they have the truth. True. So we want to pursue the truth. But sometimes we need a humility to realize sometimes my opinion about the truth mm -hmm. is wrong. Mm -hmm. And I need to make room for your opinion, unless you're a heretic of some sort. But I need to be very cautious and saying, well, that's not true. And, um, and then we want to separate. Well, our lifetime is to be in the pursuit of what is really true. Yes. And we should always be setting those judges and officers at our gates so yes. that we can make the necessary that's adjustments. Right. Yeah. Because like you said, those officers and judges that sat in the gates of the city when they found someone that wasn't true mm -hmm. they had to be dismissed well, well you know I want something that uh, is it, worth pointing out I think is that when we read about the New Jerusalem it has a wall around it and this enormous city which is the bride of Messiah it has a, this enormous wall all the way around and there are 12 gates three gates mm -hmm. on each side and what are the names of the gates? Over each of the gates is the name of one of the tribes. Yeah. And so it's even in the New Jerusalem, it's almost like, well, I'm going through the, the Benjamin gate. It's almost as if the prophecy is being fulfilled by Messiah that you will judge the tribes of Israel. You'll be the judges. And when we go through that gate, through the Benjamin gate, there be, it's like there'll be a representative Benjamin there to welcome us in to say welcome in and, and to, to um, I don't think you have to do too much interrogation because nothing mm -hmm. unholy or dark will come in but there's still judges at this at the gates and we have a we have a beloved um, our our God our mm -hmm. our most high God sits with the elders yes at the gates that's and right. he's the one that wants to be the guardian yes. and the judge. Well, I want to point out one last thing. I know we're spending like half our time just on the few <laughs> first opening mm -hmm. verses. But I want to suggest one other possibility for this Zedek, Zedek, you shall, shall you pursue. Why it's repeated. If you look at the next phrase, it says, so that you will, A, live. Yes. And B, Possess the land that yes. Adonai your God gives you. Mm. There are two things God wants us to accomplish. And I know for a long time in my life, I wanted righteousness so I would live. Because so I knew, knew the wages of sin is death. So I don't want to sin. I'll live a righteous life so I'll live. But God says, what are you living for? Mm. Oh, I'm mm. saved. What are you saved for? Well, God wants us to then possess the land that he has for us. In other words, to come in and conquer, to live a victorious life, to accomplish his purpose for our existence. So he says, you have to continue your pursuit of Zedek. So you pursue Zedek so you live. Mm -hmm. You continue to pursue Zedek so you can possess the land. Mm -hmm. I know too many people who are celebrating the fact that God's given them life. but They seem at a loss to know what to do with it. So we want to inherit what God has given us to inherit, to mm. accomplish his purpose, and to finish the mission he's given each one of us in this world to do, whatever that might be. Yeah. <clears throat> one of the other things that you and I have noticed in this portion, in, in other portions, is that we're warned about taking bribes yes. or about um, 
looking and showing partiality, going back to that mythological vit, um, image yeah. of justice, she, she has a blindfold. That's right. Because even, <laughs> even we know, as humans, when we created that image, that true justice cannot be affected mm -hmm. by our personal prejudice. That's right. And so those are the warnings that we have right. here in this portion as well. It's it's so, so important. And you don't think you're doing it, Grant? <laughs> but <laughs> listen, we are all so susceptible to holding up certain individuals because they seem more like more of a celebrity kind of personality. Or we're dependent on them in some or way. Or they have something to offer us. And it takes such humility. It does. Such and humility courage. and courage. Yes. Let's talk about courage a little bit. Let's talk about that courage. That is quite a theme in this portion yeah. as well. Well, now we're going to skip way on over <laughs> to... Uh, we might come back. Uh, yeah, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll come back. But I think we're going to have to go over to chapter 20 okay. for that. Is that where you're thinking? Sure, okay. yeah. Yeah, this is uh, for when the military is getting ready to go in and do battle. And uh, in verse 1, when you go out to the battle against your enemy and you see horse and chariot, a people more numerous than you, you shall not fear them. That's a commandment. Mm -hmm. For Adonai your God is with you, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. He shall, it shall be that when you draw near to the war, the Kohen, the priest, the high priest, shall approach and speak to the people. Now, the, the priest is going to speak, and then the officers, the Shotrim, are going to speak. And our air conditioner just kicked on. I'm going to close that window. Hopefully that will help a little bit. And he shall say to them, verse 3, Shema Yisrael, hear, o Israel, that you are coming near to the battle against your enemies. A, let your heart not be faint. B, do not be afraid. C, do not panic. D, do not be broken before them. Sometime I'm going to do a study of those four varieties of fear. Because you have four kinds of fears there, four kinds of ways fear can just absolutely hamstring you and keep you from the victory. For Adonai your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you with your enemies to save you. One of the things that Rob and I have been talking about, you and I have been talking about lately, is that cowardly people are dangerous. Mm. Cowardly people are dangerous. And we just watched a movie the other night where these brave people are going out and, and they're doing some exploring and they, they come to this one guy's SOS signal. Mm -hmm. And it turns out he was an absolute traitor because of his cowardice. And he tried to sabotage the entire mission because he was afraid and wanted to get back home. And uh, turned out killing himself, turned out killing one of the other explorers. and. And when we look at, in, at the, the 12 spies, 10 of them came back with cowardice. And as a result, they made the entire nation cowardly. And then they're ready to stone mm -hmm. Joshua and Caleb. <clears throat> they were dangerous. Well, if they don't come back with a positive, good report, all the people said, yeah, let's go do yeah, this thing. Yeah. Well, when you say that cowardice is dangerous, it's not only dangerous to other people, but it's mostly dangerous to ourselves. Absolutely. We're a danger to ourselves when we yeah. begin to walk in fear and cowardice. I mean, think about it. It's I, how many times have we read stories or seen a, in a movie the depiction of a battle scene, and the shooting starts, and somebody who is just overwhelmed with terror, and they just cuddle up into a ball, mm -hmm. and they just can't move. But then eventually, what do they do? They do something so stupid. That looks like bravery, but they jump up and they start running out in the open, and then they get killed. Yeah, you know, we expose that was to not danger. courage that made them right. expose themselves. Right. That was cowardice that made them expose themselves. Well, why these um, categories of people with the new house and the uh, new bride and the new vineyard? Why those three categories? Well, the officers stand up in verse 5 and they speak to the people saying, Who is the man who has built a house 
And it's not Hanukkah. It, it's <laughs> the word inaugurate, dedicate, yeah. Hanukkah. Let him go and return to his house. Lest he die in the war, another man will inaugurate it. So this is not cowardice. He's just saying, your work's not done yet. There are more important things than fighting this you war. You belong there, not here. You belong there. We right. recognize your courage. You go do that. God's going to give us the victory, even mm -hmm. without you. Mm -hmm. But you go take care of that. And then verse 6, who is the man who has planted a vineyard and not redeemed it? Let him go return to his house, lest he die in the war, another man will redeem it. Who is the man who has betrothed a woman, not yet married her? Let him go return to his house. Now, when you look at those three, there's something really amazing that you see there. These are the three reasons Messiah has not yet returned. Hmm. Because he, when he returns, it's going to be to do battle. And the reasons he has not returned to do battle, because he's, he's still building a house right. that he has not dedicated. Right. He's planting a vineyard, and he's watering and, and growing this vineyard, mm -hmm. but he hasn't come to harvest it yet. Mm -hmm. He's betrothed to a bride wow. that he's not yet married. Isn't that amazing? But when those three things happen, then he's saying it's time to go to war. That's really a great big picture, and the... <laughs> the detail of this passage that I can really apply and hopefully is encouraging to others that are listening. There are times that you assume that you need to leave your own life, so to speak, yeah. and go out and be part of something that seems bigger and more important in order to be significant mm. in the kingdom. And what God is saying is, wait, wait, wait. You go Take home, care of home and be faithful, finishing what yes. you've begun there, that is where you belong. Yep. That is where your place is. Yep. If we could get that, yeah. if That's we could just get that. And then later in verse 8, it's really important to realize that we can't infect other people with our pessimism. Yes. Because pessimism is so contagious. Mm -hmm. It says, who's this man that is afraid and faint-hearted? Let him depart and return to his house. Why? So he might not make his brother's hearts melt like his heart. Yeah. I have been on both the giving and the receiving end of pessimism. You know, when you're feeling great about life and you spend two minutes with somebody who is yeah. just a Debbie Downer, and yeah. suddenly you're just like, huh, maybe they're right. And you just begin to doubt. On the other hand, I've been the one. I know, oh, to discourage I others, and haven't we all? I'm working on that. Yeah. Well, fear is a dangerous thing, and cowards are dangerous people. You know, and when John F. Kennedy, I think he's quoting Roosevelt, but he says, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. So true. Fear is, is, a, is almost public enemy number one. It seems like every single podcast we talk about fear. Yeah. And I think it's because it's <clears throat> such an epidemic and it is our enemy. And we're told that the power of life and death is in our tongue, in our words. Yes. And that doesn't just mean the words that we speak out the gate of mm -hmm. our mouth because yeah. we don't set the proper judges over it. It's the gate of our mouth and the words that we speak to our own mind. Yes. Like the sign, I think I quoted in the podcast previously, that sign you have in your office, don't believe everything you think. Or self-talk that isn't mm -hmm. true. And self-talk that doubts what you know is true. Um, you know, years ago, this is a, a trail I didn't plan to take, but I have to trust that it's going to be encouraging to others as it is to me when I remember it. I was told that our life in this world is like a, a journey through the dark desert at night and we can't see. Every once in a while we get this flash, like a lightning flash and everything around us lights up and we can see it clearly. We hear, we hear God's voice. Everything around us is in a place that makes sense for that moment and you're like, I got it. I know what's true, I know what's real, got it. And you just feel this peace and encouragement come over you and then all of a sudden that lightning flash is over and it's pitch black again and you're like required to continue the journey based on what you saw clearly when you saw the flash of light. Yes. 
and it, you walk in the memory of what you know to be true you walk in the memory of what you know to be true and then just when you start to think i can't do this anymore there's another flash, there's another flash of and i remember having heard that years ago thinking i thought it was just me <laughs> but like you said earlier right. this morning just as we were chatting before we started talking um about the portion here together our life is like a minefield mm -hmm. but he lights our way and yes. shows us where it's up and yeah. we he tells us the truth but when those lights go out if you have someone murmuring yes. beside oh, you and being pessimistic and mm -hmm. saying you might as well give up and quit or just run back go back can you imagine how wonderful it'd be if with every thought that goes through our mind there was a footnote that gave us the source of the thought. Oh, yes. You know, I was just reading a quote that I had, had written down years ago where a rabbi is writing from the viewpoint of Satan. And he has Satan saying this. He says, your biggest mistake is that you confuse you with me. Mm. In other words... Satan speaks a lie. We think, well, that, that was my own thought. I thought that. That was my own cleverness and my, my own logic speaking. It wasn't. It was him. But Satan speaks to us in our own voice. But if we had that footnote that told us, this isn't from you. This is from the enemy. We would reject it. This isn't you. This is from God. We would accept it. But God gives us his word. You know, the word of God is living and sharper than a two-edged sword dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and then also says of the thoughts and the, and the intents of the heart right right those get so confused hmm. we, we we don't know what are the things or the thoughts that god's given me and then what are my own emotions and they're all confused but with the word of god that sword it comes and does surgery in our minds and says okay this this is from the spirit this is from the soul from the emotions and there is a verse. There's a verse earlier in our portion that, at first glance, seems nonsensical. But like, just a moment when you were talking, um, a moment ago, I thought of chapter 17, verse six, because I believe that this speaks to to where our conversation has gone. It says, um, "On the evidence of two witnesses or three witnesses, he who is to die shall be put to death. He shall not." Be put to death on the evidence of one witness mm -hmm. it's so fascinating that that sentence on um, that he who is to die shall be put to death should be rendered the dead you shall put to death yes. <laughs> <laughs> now what does yeah. that mean that means that there are those who are called dead even while they look like they're alive mm -hmm. but the righteous are called living even after they are dead. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? And there are people who may be walking and talking in our midst, but they're really dead inside. And they're the ones yeah. who are going to make us doubt everything. Right. Or it might not be a person, it's an idea, it's a voice, and those things have to be put to death. We have to. And it says, your eyes shall not pity them. How many times that say is that said in this Torah portion? Don't let your eye pity them. And sometimes my eye pities a great idea I had. Oh, that was such a good idea. It turns out it was wrong. But I'm still reluctant to let go of it because it seems so clever. It was dead wrong, but I want to pity it because it was so intelligent and so logical. Do you remember that ancient saying? It says, those, if you, if you allow the how does it go if you are compassionate <laughs> to the cruel, cruel that's right if you are compassionate to those who are cruel or that which is cruel you will eventually be cruel to the to compassionate. compassionate and boy has that happened yeah that happened that has happened on every oh, level absolutely because it's really um, a strong message in in our life to just extend compassion to those that you see 
behaving in ways that are bringing yeah. death and cruelty to the world around them. Oh yeah, we have to feel sorry for them. We have, well, yeah. you know, they have a right to express their heart too and they're important, no. but they're, they're reaping destruction, oh, so with, much destruction. With, with their words and with, with the yeah. ideas that they're spreading. And so eventually, eventually, yeah. then we're cruel to those who are compassionate. Yeah. Yeah. So true. Anyway, boy, did we go off on a tangent. Oh, yeah. This is, I, I don't even know where we are. <laughs> what, Pat? What is our portion? <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're still in Deuteronomy. Yes. Should we talk about the prophet? Sure. We, we touched on it last week. Did as we? As far as a false prophet. But how about the prophet God said? Ooh. Uh, where, Do we have where, time? Well, no. Our time's gone, but we've never let that stop us before. Briefly. Briefly. Okay. Okay. In chapter 18, I just love this. Verse yeah. 15, mm -hmm. Moses says, A prophet from your midst, from your brethren, like me, like Moses, like me, shall Adonai your God establish for you. To him shall you hearken, shall you listen. And mm -hmm. the word to listen is also the word to obey. Shema, to hear, to obey, same word in Hebrew. According to all that you asked of Adonai your God and Horeb on the day of the congregation, saying, May I no longer hear the voice of Adonai my God and this great fire. Um, I can no longer see so that I shall not die. Then Adonai said to me, They have done well in what they have said. I will establish a prophet for them from among you, their brethren, like you, Moses, and I will place my words in his mouth. He shall speak to them everything that I will command him. And it shall be that the man who will not listen to my words, that he shall speak in my name, I will exact from him. Hmm. So this prophet, of course, is the Messiah. But the rabbis, you know, they didn't always realize that this is the Messiah Moses is talking about. So they were looking for the Messiah. They were looking for, a, for Elijah to return. Right. But they're also looking for this prophet to come. Because it's considered the prophet. Yeah, this prophet, prophet like Moses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this unique prophet. Mm -hmm. And so in John 1, verse 19, you know, the, the, um, the uh, messengers from Jerusalem were sent to interrogate John the Immerser. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what are you doing? And so anyways, this is the testimony of John when the Judeans sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? First, he confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Then they asked, are you the prophet? The prophet, wow. And he answered, no. Hmm. So then they said, well, that's our whole list. What mm -hmm. are you then? You're not any of those three. And then he goes on to explain. So uh, what we realize is that Elijah does come as a forerunner, but the Messiah and the prophet like Moses are the same person. And so many things in Yeshua's life parallel the things in Moses' life. When Moses is born, the government was trying to kill, to kill him, to kill the baby boys. When Yeshua was born, the government was trying to kill the baby boys and did. Um, Moses was called out of Egypt. Yeshua was raised in Egypt and he was called out. Moses spent 40 years in the wilderness before Joshua would bring the people in. Yeshua spent 40 days in the wilderness before he, Yeshua, brought the people, began to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Moses came down from the mountain twice. The first time he was rejected. You know, the people were sinning with the golden calf. The second time he came down, his face is glowing and the people are watching for him to come. First time Yeshua came, he was broken. You know, he's the living word and he was broken. He was crucified because the people were too involved in, a, in, in religious activity that was hypocritical. But when he comes down the second time, he'll come down in glory and be received by a people who are watching for him. And there's so many other things, mm -hmm. parallels between Moses and Yeshua. So- um, Well, and then I'm gonna go, when you said Moses and Yeshua are the same person. No, not the same person. Right. The prophet like Moses right. is the same person. Right. I, oh, okay. I just yeah. wanted to make sure we understand right. that clearly. Ah, yeah. oh, so much. 
So good. Okay, I think we've gone sufficiently over time. Yeah. Is there something you want to f close out with? Well, um, I was just wanting to remind all of us that we are entering a new month. Um, Rosh Kodesh is soon, in a few days' time, and we are... It's tonight, isn't it? <sighs> Soon, I believe yeah. it's like Wednesday, Thursday yeah, this week, okay. and we're entering the month of Elul. And that is the countdown to the end of this particular year. It's the year. last month of the year. And we are approaching a new start, mm -hmm. a refresh. Tishrei. The, yeah, and Rosh Hashanah. And Yom Kippur. The head Sukkot. of the new year. And so something that I particularly love to remember during these days leading up to Rosh Hashanah and a in a time of renewal and restart and repentance and all of those things is that the acronym for Elul is Ani La Dodi Va Dodi Li because it, those mm -hmm. letters start with the same letters that spell Aleph, out Lamed, this Vav, month. Lamed. And yeah. I just want all of us to keep in mind that the whole point of his Torah is to bring us into relationship into a marriage of intimacy mm -hmm. with yeah. him. And I was thinking about how without humility, we really can't be vulnerable enough to even begin to experience yes. intimacy. That's right. So let's allow ourselves during these days to be humble and vulnerable before him and possibly even before others if mm -hmm. necessary, to prepare ourselves for these special days around the corner because like yes. one of my dear friends reminded me the other day like never before we have to meet with him and receive from him everything he has for us for the days to come that's right especially in these end days Honestly, these birth pains of messiah he has something mm -hmm. special to share with us and i don't yes. want to miss it i want to prepare myself then mm -hmm. i want to be present and then i want to take what yeah. he offers us into the new cycle and the new year so let's take our fingers out of our ears yes. and listen to what god wants to speak yes. to us this year amen amen that's a brilliant way to finish this thank you well until next week all right we wish shalom. you shalom and god bless thank you for joining us for today's teaching if the work of Torah Today Ministries has touched your life, please consider making a donation or sponsoring an upcoming video. As a video sponsor, you'll have an exclusive opportunity to memorialize a family member, celebrate a special event, or simply support the ongoing creation of similar content. Your tax-deductible contribution helps ensure that our teachings continue to reach all who are longing for truth. Click the link or visit our website to learn more.